Guinness are renowned for saying good things come to those who wait. And after three years of waiting, after paying the surprise shipping tax, is Street Fighter the miniatures game any good? Yeah, goddamn right it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This game indeed put me through the ringer. There were several times, especially last year during the pandemic, when I was considering asking for a refund. I got refunded for quite a few Kickstarters last year, Solomon Kane's All In being the biggest one, and I was so close to sending the email, but something pulled me away. Maybe it was nostalgia, because Street Fighter 2 was basically my Huckleberry in the 90s. I had the Mega Drive version, a family who enjoyed to play it, and friends who could come round and play it also. I will honestly admit that I didn't bother with the Street Fighter series after that. I had 4 when it was on the Game Pass a couple of years ago, and I surprisingly remembered most of Ken's moves. I'll always be a Ken main, my son ended up becoming a Ryu main, and got pretty good at it. So this game is obviously something we can both connect on, even if it's slightly a little too complicated for a nine-year-old. But we will try it one day, without a doubt. Anyway, this game ticks all the boxes for me as a Street Fighter 2 fan, because all the fighters are from that game, and I'm glad the basic pledge gave us all those fighters from that game for people like me. Ones who are nearly 40, grew up with Street Fighter 2, loved it, and as we aged, we moved on to other games, leaving Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat as distant nostalgic memories. For people like me, of which there's no doubt a few, I looked at those expansions with four fighters in them, and I honestly said, who the blooming hell is that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't know any of those characters, but for those of you who do know them, and have grew up with them, because Street Fighter does tend to be generational, I'm glad the option existed for you to get the fighters that you wanted. No doubt some people weren't happy paying extra for their favourites, but I'm sure a load of people jumping in on this were nostalgic for Street Fighter 2, and no doubt Mortal Kombat will feature those characters from 1 and 2 also, because again, blokes like me are nostalgic for that game, and nostalgia sells. Even though I doubt I'll be jumping in on that one. More on that later. Regardless, gameplay wise, this is of course mainly a 1v1 card combat fighter. You pick your fighter, they pick theirs, you both shuffle your decks, you draw 5 cards, you get a free movement and then 2 actions, you can move again, draw cards or play a fight card. At first you play it face down, your opponent then gets to pick if they want to block for 2 dice, or attempt to counter by playing a card. If the counter is the same type of the card, be that strike, projectile or special, you counter your opponent and deal damage. Now one tiny problem I have with this game is I've just recently discovered Super Fantasy Brawl, and that is another combat card game, but its biggest plus is that it doesn't have any dice, and one of the negatives for this is that it uses dice. I understand that for the block actions, but I wish combat actions dealt with a set amount of damage, with you maybe using dice to improve said damage with EXE, supers or ultras. Because one of the most annoying things I've discovered in this game is finally getting your ultra, rolling six to seven dice where you get a load of punches and then your opponent nearly blocks the lot because of card manipulation to get more block dice and luck. The rest of the gameplay though is pretty solid. I've been playing mostly against the AI, specifically the solo rules created by Noel Martinez, who has uploaded them to Board Game Geek and runs his own YouTube channel. Link in the description below. The cards make each of the fighters feel unique. Ryu is pretty balanced all across the board with a solid mix of all fighting type. Ken, my main man, is great at setting up combos. M. Bison hits like a truck and is pretty hard to predict as he can counter you pretty well. Vega is hard to pin down and will hit you from multiple distances. Guile seems to love projectiles and has more event cards, so gets the opportunity for a bit stronger defense. 
Blanca gets the meter up pretty fast, so he can get his ultra pretty fast. And lastly, E Honda and Zangief are near enough blooming OP. Honda lacks projectiles, but Zangief, yeesh. Do not play the medium difficulty AI against that man. <laughs> anyway, each fighter has 40 cards in their deck. Most of them are multiples as there's not many moves in Street Fighter, but everyone's moves seem to be represented. And I especially love getting them on the 2D board. Now that brings the old memories of flowing back. It's just a shame that there's only one. Now because... I didn't go all in with this. I only have the two boards from the starter set, the 2D board and the expansion one. I mainly fight on the dojo map as it's what I've punched the most terrain out of it for. Quality of the board's picture is great, but my boards seem to struggle to stay flat in the middle, even when I've put heavy items on them. And I have a bone to pick with the terrain pieces. Yes, they look nice, but two of my trees didn't punch out correctly, even when I was being careful. The little stands at the bottom snapped, and so now a couple of my trees are a bit wonky donkey. And let's not get started with the fact that, because of me having to play on the side of the kitchen table, I seem to constantly knock the large trees over, and then it takes unnecessary time for me to look at the rule book to see where they're located mid-battle. It's a pet peeve, and minor, I know, but it's why I'm favouring the 2D board without the terrain. I would honestly have liked terrain tokens as an extra, just small circles with pictures of terrain pieces on. It might not look as good on YouTube videos, but I might end up knocking some up myself just to make things easier for me, and create less knocks or accidental breakages. In terms of the main selling point of this game, the pre-painted larger scale miniatures, in all honesty they're great, but I wouldn't have minded them to be a little bit smaller or unpainted, because the painting fiasco is one of the things that basically made this project get delayed. Card art delays are fine for me, as Capcom are obviously precious with their baby, but the minis for me are not as good as the amiibos that I have in my collection already. Some of the colouring, especially on Blanca, is lacking a bit of wash, and the eyes on some are a bit skewed when you look up close. They did the job at tabletop level, but I feel the costs of this game system could have been brought down without it. Maybe for those people who want to display these or can't slash won't paint them, I would have been in the won't phase for a while myself. It's great they are pea painted, but these are just getting shoved into boxes for me, and so I'd have been fine with them as unpainted miniatures. Overall though, like I said, they are great. They are as advertised, so I can't really have grounds to complain, but I did honestly think they were gonna be a little bigger. But anyway, one thing you do have to be careful with is the inserts for the minis. I honestly can't wait till I can sort some storage out for this game, as pulling these out the inserts feels like you're trying to pull off a sodding face hugger. Some of the characters are so tough to get out of the packaging, and you really have to be careful of the arms and special lightning beams that are on most of these guys. Whenever I'm pulling out Chun-Li, Blanca or Dalsim, I just feel like they're on the verge of snapping. So please, please be extra careful with yours. Something else I've struggled with is the inserts on the cards. I spent nearly half hour sleeving up the core box the other day, only to find that the sleeves I've used mean I couldn't sodding well put them back in the box with the box inserts. So I had to remove them all once more to put them back in the bleeding box. Needless to say, lots of swearing was involved. Now obviously, at this point, every mon and his dog knows about the dial issues, with there not being noughts on the ultras or health. Honestly, I haven't had any issues with using them for markings. Yes, you can put stickers on them easy enough, or just use a bit of Tipex. But one problem I have encountered is the health dial being very loose. I've lost track of the health a couple of times, and put it back to what I thought it was. 
It's another slight knock, but those slight knocks all add up, unfortunately. I have to admit I haven't played the tag team or free-for-all modes. I did give the boss expansion a go, though. And let me tell you, Akuma is a sodding beast. <laughs> it was fun, and I'm glad the option exists for variety. But I've just found myself enjoying the 1v1 experience with the best of three rounds against the AI far superior. And so it will be the only way that I will probably play games that I'm going to be bringing to this channel. Even if I want to tag team Bison and Kami with that cracking extra sculpt we got. Regardless, in conclusion, is Street Fighter great? Damn right it is. The core mechanics alone are what have kept me playing this over the weekend. Super Fantasy Brawl is much better. Damn Joe and his team grading this on your scale. It still for me gets a 9 out of 10, earning its badass seal of approval. You've created something tremendous you should be really proud of, and I hope Mortal Kombat goes well. I'm just not jumping in because of the shipping and tax, unfortunately. Street Fighter gives me a great nostalgic experience that I will keep coming back to. Well done Joe, and even bigger well done to Alex, the unsung hero who did most if not all of the cards. The balancing seems to be fine mostly across the board, Zangief could probably have done with another pass, but I'm really pleased with what I've got, and if you didn't jump in, I hope you can pick this up and play this cracking game thanks for watching anyway i am of course tabletop wolf please subscribe like comment all that jazz that you can do for free and if you can please consider donating to my patreon thanks for watching